Okay, so this is a very high yield question for USMLE. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share with one of your friends who's prepping for USMLE. Help bring awareness to the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find us on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group. Link is also down below. Now, let me start the fucking question. So we have a male newborn, 37 weeks gestation. Okay, so that's born term. Cyanotic, bowel sounds absent in the abdomen. Borborygmy, auscultated in the left hemithorax. Borborygmy is the medical term for bowel sounds. You need to know this vocabulary word for USMLE. X-ray of the chest in the neonate is showing us loops of bowel in the left hemithorax. Okay, so this is high yield. Now we're just going to go through our answers one by one here. Choice A, aspiration of meconium. Wrong fucking answer. Okay, so meconium aspiration syndrome. Actually pretty rare for this to show up on USMLE. The only comment I have is that on one of the new pediatric forms, it's either form 5 or 6 for 2CK, is they will give you a post-term neonate born at 43 weeks gestation who has meconium aspiration syndrome, and the diagnosis is persistent fetal hypertension. Okay? As I said, it's I'm not going to go off on a long tangent about this right now, but you can just take home the point that post born post term 42 43 weeks gestation is a risk factor for meconium aspiration syndrome, which in turn is a risk factor for a diagnosis called persistent fetal hypertension, and it's on one of the new pediatric forms. Choice B, failure of rotation of proximal bell, also the wrong fucking answer. This is congenital midgut volvulus. This will be the answer on the USMLE if they tell you an upper GI series was performed in a neonate or an infant, okay? So an upper GI series is going to be an abdominal x-ray with a barium contrast follow-through to look at the uh, anatomy of the upper GI tract, okay? So even if you have no idea what's going on in the question and they show you an x-ray with a corkscrew appearance and you still have no idea what you're looking at, if they if they tell you an upper GI series was performed, or they say an x-ray of the abdomen with barium contrast follow-through is performed, which means upper GI series, the diagnosis is going to be congenital midgut volvulus, which is failure of rotation of proximal bowel, okay? High yield for pediatrics for 2CK. Choice C, incomplete formation of pleuroperitoneal membranes is the correct answer. Diagnosis is congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Extremely high yield, okay? So it's going to present with absent or decreased sounds, uh, bowel sounds in the abdomen, and borborygmy slash bowel sounds in the left hemithorax, okay? Just standard, easy, not complicated, but you need to be aware of the diagnosis for the USMLE. It always occurs on the left side in questions, okay, in the left hemithorax. Why it occurs only on the left side? No fucking idea, okay? It just does. So this is the diagnosis you need to know, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Choice D, renal agenesis, wrong answer. This is, of course, Potter sequence, where we have renal agenesis followed by oliguria, and then that in turn causes pulmonary hypoplasia, and you can also get flattened faces, uh, rock or bottom feet, okay? And deformation is the answer if they ask you for the mechanism for Potter sequence. That's on one of the NBMEs for step one right now. That can be confused, Potter sequence, with trisomy 18, okay? Because trisomy 18, Edward syndrome, can also present with foot abnormality slash rocker bottom feet. However, you're not going to get flattened facies in Edward syndrome, okay? Whereas you do get flattened facies in Potter sequence. Uh, flattened facies, when we talk about trisomies, is Down syndrome, okay? It's not Edward syndrome. But trisomy 18, Edward syndrome, you can get hand abnormalities, crossover of the fingers, we said rocker bottom feet, prominent occiput, Micronathia, okay, that's classic, and emphalocele as well, classic for Edwards syndrome. A lot we can talk about when it, when it comes to the trisomies. We're going to keep this clip concise. Just your take home is congenital diaphragmatic hernia, failure of formation of pleuroperitoneal membranes on the left, okay? I'm obviously going to make more content. You know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.